Well, breaking away from the, the car itself now, and it's, it's great to be able to look at a piece of history, but going back numerous years ago, you also did a trip to America. And uh, I know you've, in discussion earlier we were talking and some of those photos that you had there are slides of the early days. That's right. That's another one that Corey's uh, gone through, him and Pedro went through, took some, some stills off, and has um, really sort of opened a few eyes up around the world. That's right. It, um, he posted it up on the ham about the, the story about my trip to America. I don't... I'm not um, computer literate, I suppose you could say, so I don't know how to post photos. So um, he and Pedro, um, over a few drinks um, at our place, uh, took some digital photos on the, of the slides on the screen, and it amazed me that they came out as good as they did. Yep. Um, amazing thing about it, there was, uh, there was about 150 posts on the site, but there was over 10,000 people that viewed it. And uh, because... The photos were all taken in 1966. Um, a lot of people could relate to them and remember them back in those days. And there was even a, um, a hot rodder in Sweden who saw a picture of his car at a Boston hot rod show in 1966. And he's since restored that car. And it was the only colour photo that he'd ever seen of his car okay. back in those days. Well, we're talking 1966, and I know it's not an uncommon thing today for hot rodders to venture over to America, and Larry does an annual tour every year, and I think he said he had 23 on that tour this year. Mm. Uh, but in 1966, that was, that was a huge thing to travel it, to it America. Was. It wasn't just jump on a plane and you're there, you know, one and a half days later sort of thing. No, well, we went by boat. Yeah. We went by boat, and it took us a month to get there. And um, the thing about going by boat uh, was, firstly, it was cheap. Uh, I think an airfare was something like two thousand, oh, in excess of two thousand dollars. The boat fare was seven hundred dollars, and uh, when we came back on the boat, we came back on a different level, and we actually got a refund from P and O because it was cheaper a couple of floors down. And the other thing was, you were able to bring back one ocean ton of luggage, free of freight costs. So we brought back things like, I bought a set of, well, all of us brought back a set of Krager wheels. We brought back a single four-barrel manifold, a couple of steering wheels, other manifolds, car parts, due coil ignitions and stuff like that. So um, we were able to bring them back without having to pay any freight. And the culture with, within Australia as compared to America, America was sort of light years ahead of us in those days. Oh, that, it was... It, it was unreal. I've, I haven't been back to America since and I don't think, um, I'm not really that interested in going because the culture in those days was so different to what we had in Australia. Australia was that far behind. Uh, America had all their takeaway food places there, McDonald's and the Kentucky chicken yeah. and all that sort of stuff. And we uh, Pizza restaurants, that was another thing we learned about in America. And um, we had none of that. And all the cars over there, of course, were all your, um, your 50s and 60s American cars. There was no Japanese cars. There was a few, um, few Beetles, a few Volkswagens, and a few imports like Alphas and that, but they were very few and far between. Yeah. The bulk of the cars were all American. Well, now, I think the biggest selling uh, car is Toyota, and Honda's a close second or something like that. Yeah, things have, things have changed. We won't say whether we're going for better or for worse, but I know which one I'd rather have my backside set in at the moment. So, I know, I know. know I've, uh, um, I've been brought up on a very pro-American car culture, yeah. so, um, yeah. Oh, it's great to share some of these um, memories and times with you anyway, Pete, and thanks for bringing the car out. I know it's been a bit of a hike for you because you're living out of town nowadays on the farm. That's right, yeah. Um, you do have another 32 Ford, which you're working on. 32 five window in progress, and it's got the... Exact same motor as that in that. All right. It's a 318 poly with triple 97s. Um, it's got a set of uh, finned covers identical to the Edelbrocks that are made by Craig and Ellen Fountain in yep. Sydney. Yeah. Or Newcastle, actually. Yeah. Um, yeah, pretty much the same thing. I haven't got the dual coil ignition. I've got a, a Mopar electronic in that one, but yeah. It's basically but the car the you're building along the traditional lines? It's along the traditional. It'll be fully fended 32. Yep. Yeah. Well, all right, thanks for, again, Mr. Uh, hopefully one night we'll get around for a bit of a slideshow and uh, have a look at some more of these pictures. I've got plenty of slides, that's for sure.